So um, I'm going to kind of walk you through an example. Um, but before I do that, let me introduce myself again. My name is Ashish Gupta. I'm the head of marketing for Banyan. Uh, this is day three. So I am an expert by all accounts. Uh, uh, but nonetheless, uh, jokes aside, this is an exciting time. I mean, the, the, the opportunity to solve you know, the security problem is immense. And what, what Giant talked about is really this, this idea that if you're going to build a holistic solution that is that is really enterprise class and is scalable, you have to have foundational principles you believe in. And those are the three principles that Jayant was talking about. I'm going to walk you through um, a, a set of examples, uh, which is why we believe we're in this post-VPN world that we're, we refer reference. If you go to our website, you'll see that as well. And kind of explain to you what the challenges are, what customers, maybe the customers you're dealing with as well, have seen in, in, in the market. So traditional VPN deployments are really uh, been a, ba a boon for a lot of people, right? I mean, it, it totally embarked the idea of secure remote access. That was huge. It enabled mobility. It enabled the, the context that people go, go out there and do a lot of the different things remotely. But it all began with this idea that you had an office worker that had to access their application securely. And you had the privilege at the time of having a private network that you could go to a data center and access the applications that were critical to your needs. Great, you had a, an ID password, and you're, you're off and running getting your Oracle and your SAP access. Then came the notion that I have a remote worker that's working in a you know, Chicago facility, logging into a headquarters in Atlanta. Well, that required some capability that was where the genesis of VPNs came in, extending that private network virtually. So your virtual private network that was tunneled across your networking ecosystem. Great, remote workers are working and you're good to go. Now you get to a situation where you have a variety of workers and you have to segment that scenario where a contractor who's working a particular problem should only be able to see a particular set of, set of, set, set of applications. And therefore you did segmentation. Great, another valuable added tool and capability. <coughs> but the reality was that this was fine when you had a limited construct, limited worker sets or the worker types and limited application access. As you see the evolution of cloud ecosystems with different services, you had to create and extend that same remote access. You're doing site-to-site -site VPNs. Created complexities, another level of complexities. As these things became more ephemeral, you had to change the policies and create more management ha headaches and nightmare. Added to this was the, the container ecosystems. Again, further extending the VPNs to give you access. But the reality is that it's a general gateway giving you access to all of this stuff. Finally, hosted applications became another realm where people started coming in and saying, I need to get access to that. On the left hand side, you got BYOD. You got different developer types, which created a whole new industry around SSOs and MDMs and so on and so forth, which is great. They're all designed to get you a higher level of security posture. But what they were fundamentally doing is creating a very complicated scenario. And so you had to manage these disparate systems in dis disparate fashions, and essentially created a huge complexity for the security admin to really create a, a security posture they could continuously keep up with, especially in this dynamic world that we're seeing here. So with that, this is what was left with. You had operational complexities. You had security challenges because you had broad access through a singular gateway VPN. And users were not experiencing great performance. There were multiple hops, as Tern was talking about. You have, if you're trying to get access to a resource, you don't have to go to a, a server in, in Oregon and coming back to San Francisco before you, you know, respond to something back with the request coming in, coming in from New York. It's just a challenge. You have multiple hops, and it's done because just configuration-related issues, and so on and so forth. And not to, not to you know, underscore the point that a lot of these people are humans. Turns out they all are. And they're all flawed in the context that you lose credentials. Things happen. And when that happens, there's huge access challenges to deal with. There's got to be a better way, and that's where the Beyond Corp and the Zero Trust concept came in, which is you don't want to trust anything. Trust inherently cannot be built into the ecosystem. The idea that you have a private, trusted network just cannot be the foundational for security. And that's really what we're talking about, is that you have to get, if you walk away from that notion, what will the world look like? And that's what Google faced with Beyond Corp. The idea was that, hey, you're going to have to authenticate people. You're going to have to give them this idea that they have a lot of stuff that they're working with. You have to check with you know, device inventory. You've got to check with user inventory. You've got to check with a variety of different things to essentially identify who that individual is, who that device is, and what is that in, in the, the notion of giving access. And it became a centralized access control engine that was built by, by Google and the Beyond Corp. 
a great thesis and great uh, you know solution that can be worked and incorporated if you own every single element of the ecosystem, which GCP does. So if you're happy running everything in, on, on Google, this is great. But 99% of the enterprises do not do that. And in fact, people don't want to be hampered to one provider. In fact, they're going to go to multiple clouds and so on and so forth. So great idea, absolutely agree with it, but you've got to go through that process. You have to be believe in the concepts and deliver them from an, for an enterprise. And again, you're seeing a lot of people you know, talk about this, and you know, we'll skip this in a little bit. So what, what does Banyan really go after? Well, the concept is that we basically assume there is no trust. There is no private privilege network. And we start with the notion of eliminating that concept completely. Not that the, the corporate headquarters is going away. The, co the concept that there's a private network or the trusted private environment is going away. And so you want to create a scenario where you control access to everything, but it's completely granularly controlled. You have the ability to essentially be, be in front of every single application instance that's out there, no matter where it's located, whether it's on premise, off site, mm. in a cloud somewhere, et cetera. And you want to be able to work with situa situations that people have already invested in. Enterprises have done a great job of, of really working with SSOs and MDMs out there. You want to pull the information uh, from these uh, uh, solutions and get a better sense of what is happening. If they don't have those tools and stuff, Banyan will certainly work with them and give them a, an ability to get those capabilities. But the context is that leverage what you know and leverage the information that's being delivered by these systems out there to create a context of what a quantified trust or trust score is. You marry that with a singular policy engine, and now you have an idea that you can understand who these people are and understand what's happening on the application side and create a singular and granular control mechanism so that on a unit by unit or device or entity to application, you can create a security policy. There is no centralized construct of going through a centralized gateway. Now, this thing is not necessarily new. I mean, networking world has done this. The separation of control and data plane is, has been, the, has been the, the fruit of everything that networking has done from a performance perspective. We're bringing that concept to the higher level, layer six, layer seven, and then essentially enabling secure, singular device user access to singular applications on the right side. And how do you do it at scale? That's the, key, that's the challenge. And that's what Banyan has done with the, the intelligent access mesh. And Tarun's going to walk into a bit more detail. But these are the principles we talked about. We deliver quantified trust through our trust score. And we'll get into all the parameters we use for generating trust score. We have a, a distributed enforcement through our intelligent access mesh. We'll walk you through what that mesh is all about. And then how do we do continuous authorization? It's not a binary decision of allow or disallow. It's constantly monitoring to your example about, hey, my posture changes, so my access should change. How do we enable that and how do we do that? So principles, if we do this right, what we've fundamentally done is have, we've essentially increased the level of security. Continuous authorization means that it's no longer a binary access scenario. We're going to be able to go through this process and give you a much better security posture given the dynamic nature of your, your particular situation at that particular point in time. And essentially focus on least privilege access at that point in time. We want to essentially enable a much better user experience with fewer or low hops. Direct access to applications. You're no longer having a heavy-handed you know, a, a, a client of some kind that's monitoring what's going on and then a, a heavy-handed singular gateway construct. It's a very lightweight construct across the board and it's direct user device to application access. And then finally, you want to make sure that users understand what's going on, but more importantly, it's not onerous on the application and security admin. They can deploy this in a few minutes, reduce the complexities of you know, reconfiguring network policies and whatnot. None of that is required in this space. This is operating at a much higher level and essentially results in a much better user experience.